The Dietrich Theater, including the art studio, has been closed down, and it makes it a little bit difficult when that's where we meet to make our videos. You know, if we can't get two guys together to throw pots, it's hard to make a video called Two Guys Throwing Pots. The Dietrich Theater has been a central part of the Tunkhannock area community, especially in helping to kind of spread the arts in there. That's where I took my classes with Steve. It's where um, Steve and Amy are resident artists and they do a lot of their art programs. Fortunately, we were able to get some video footage before everything was closed down. Hey guys, we're going to make a few videos in the next couple days uh, for things that we do at the Dietrich because the Dietrich right now is shut down and we don't, want to for we don't want you guys to forget that we still exist. We're hoping to release some videos of art projects that you can do at home with your family while everything is closed down. Keep watching the Dietrich Theater website for closings and for when they reopen and make sure to check out those pages so that you can join some of those art activities when they are back up and running. We wish all the best to you and your families. Be sure to wash your hands, stay safe, and most importantly, be kind to those around you. Now let's do some pottery. Hey guys, in this episode we're going to show you how to trim, trim some mugs. Before we can start actually trimming any bottom onto this mug, we, also, we need to center this mug onto our wheel head. And there's a couple of different tools that we can use to do that. First off, if you can see this, I actually took a bat and drew lines on it so that when I need to trim a pot, I can center it according to the lines and get it pretty close to center. And that's how I'll start off. I want to show you two techniques for centering. One you'll notice um, Steve uses, and I'll show a quick clip of that. Just get it started. <laughs> I mean, I can't be that far off. Get it just about centered. Put down a couple of balls of, of soft clay. Try and get it pretty centered. Right now I can tell it's, it's off. But if you just draw a little circle, that circle will show you where the center is. And so you can take this and then shift it a little bit. Um, to try and make it more centered. And this method works. It does take replacing the clay, um, but then you can again kind of set it there, make a circle, make a couple circles. This is getting pretty close though. Where right here we'd be able to, as you can see, we're really close to center. So that's one method of centering is to do that circle and then all of this, these are really shallow circles, so once you start doing the actual trimming, they'll all disappear. Um, you don't want to go too deep or else that would kind of ruin this. But this is the method that I like to use for centering. It's a different method than I've seen used anywhere, but what I like to do is hold my finger and spin the pot, and right now it's actually pretty close to center. And again, I'm using this bat so I can kind of see that it's centered pretty closely, but let's say it was off of center. And I'm going to hold my finger and, you, and move it in until it touches. And you can see right there that it's touching, and I'll put it right where you can see it. When it touches, stop. And then I take that position and pull it straight towards the center from where it touched. So again, I'm going to go in here until I have it touching occasionally. When it touches, I stop, and then I take two hands and pull it straight towards the center. It's similar to using a needle tool for this. I just feel like it doesn't um, cut into the pot, and it's easier for me to be able to keep track of exactly where the pot is as far as center goes. And I can also do this, I can do this lower, or I can do this higher. 
in case the bottom of the pot is actually not centered underneath the, the rim of the pot. And you go, for me at least, until I put my finger in and it the first time it touches it's pretty much dragging along the entire pot. Then I'll kind of press in the bottom there. Ooh, that bottom is really thin. I don't want to trim too much off of that, but this will, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll go right through the bottom and show you what not to do. This is what happens when I get away from Steve. Today these are what I choose. And the only reason I choose these is because they're at the top of the bucket. <laughs> Trimming. The best tool to start off with is a loop tool of some sort with a, with a, I think with a smaller point. Or if you have one of the square ones like Eric has, there's like square edges, you just use the square edge. Okay, so just get the point of your, your tool. Start in, I always start in the middle and then I pull towards the edge. When I get to the edge of the cup where I want the foot, I try to bevel that off a little bit. There you go. Just take a little bit of a wet sponge. clean that bottom. Look how beautiful that looks. Eric's got a beautiful cup that he threw here. This isn't my cup, this is Eric's. It's beautiful. So what we're doing is we're trimming the side, just getting some of the, you know, the fingerprints off. But as we're trimming it, we're starting to see that there's, you know, some other beautiful things he can do with the, the shape of it. So we're kind of, he made this nice little ridge here, and we're just using the tools that I have, a, that we're using today just to kind of clean it up a little bit and add a little more integrity to it. You know, like I don't see too many people who are making little cups like this anyway. These nice little ridges, beautiful. But, you know, that's the creative process. You've made a nice standard looking kind of cup and then uh, Eric's kind of just cleaning up some of the fingerprints and then through the fingerprints he's finding some beautiful opportunities here to make it just a little bit different. So I mean that's kind of a nice little bottom isn't it? Yeah. That's really quite nice. And then run over it with a little sponge. Uh, you don't want to get the clay when you're trimming too wet because it will adhere itself. I mean look at that. That's I, I don't see too many bottoms of cups that look like that. That's quite nice. There's a little mistake there that can be rubbed out with a sponge. So I do like to have one hand here just for added support. And we're going to cut off all that excess that we don't need. And at this point we really have a lot of flexibility as to what we want to do. This bottom right here is really thin. I can feel that. Um, but what we can do with this section here, it's going to be a little bit thicker right in there. We could actually cut a straight foot into that. And it doesn't need to be quite that dramatic. We can make a foot, cut that into it, and then then we'll take this section that's not part of the foot and kind of curve it so that it feels like that's part of the natural bowl. So you see that, how you just kind of cut in. Um, you can use this tool for doing most of that. I'm going to trim this foot down just a little bit. And I like to use this tool here for um, this mud tool for cutting in and I am going to try to cut in here to make this foot and like I said I know this 
bottom is so thin that I don't want to really even touch the center if I don't have to. So I'm just going to go really light along this edge. And I'm probably not even going to put my stamp in the middle. Because when I touched this, I just felt it sink. So I actually probably threw it a little bit too thin. But there's, there's a lot of clay right in here. And I really could just cut this in completely. But I'd like to have a foot there. So I wanted to show a couple of trimmed and finished bottoms. I guess I'll start with the one you just saw me trimming on the wheel. I did go ahead and put um, a couple of um, circles in there just as a bit of a design and I put my stamp on there. But you can see here from the side that we've tried to make it a nice rounded foot. I do like to bevel the edge now. I haven't always done that. But you saw Steve showing how I just like the look of that. How it turns out and kind of gives nice edge there. Here's a couple other ways you can finish off. This one here is just flat. Um, what you what you do with that one is just take a sponge and kind of rub it in. You can see some kind of sponge marks there a little bit. But as long as it sits flat and then for me the, the center is in a little bit, you can have a nice edge without actually trimming too much. This was another one that required very little trimming. So you can see it's a very subtle bottom right there compared to this bowl where I actually trimmed out quite a lot there gave that a nice spiral on the bottom but you can see that there's a trim a quite a bit trimmed out there and and that helped to reduce the weight on the bottom of this this one here the bottom was a little bit too thick so I trimmed out more and gave it um, kind of a nice look there that keeps this this bowl being very light and the last one I wanted to show here, this is a nice beveled edge here. And this one here, I don't know if you can tell me if I hold it just the right way. It's actually um, glazed inside this, this middle section here. It's a transparent crackled glaze. So you can do that as well. As long as this part here, along here, is not glazed so that it doesn't touch the kiln shelf when you're, when you're firing it. So if you like this video, check the Dietrich uh, website and uh, soon enough we'll be back having classes and I look forward to seeing all you guys.